when dealing with 3D renders, you may have some esoteric requirements for alpha channel data. I'll talk you through a couple of these workflows, specifically importing a final render bitmap with unassociated alpha, and also using a separate alpha render pass as a mask. Here, I've opened a TIFF, which is a render from 3ds Max and V-Ray. When the alpha channel is not added as an additional render pass in the V-Ray settings, saving out a bitmap of the render will write the alpha data, but tag it as unassociated. This allows the image to be opened with the sky detail intact. We may however wish to use the alpha channel information, either to mask the sky area out entirely, or to selectively modify it. Across on the channels panel, we will find that the unassociated alpha has been imported as a spare channel. I can right click this channel, and load it to an active selection. Then, I can move back to the layers panel, and with my background layer selected, add a mask layer. I'll then deselect, using Command D on Mac, Control D on Windows. This removes the sky from the render, and I could insert a replacement sky if required. I can expand the background layer, and hide the mask for now, which reveals the sky again. Something else I could do is mask an adjustment or filter layer to either the foreground or the sky. I'll select the background layer, then I will add a live clarity filter, and bring the slider all the way up to enhance structure in the render. Now, with the clarity layer still selected, I'll go back to the channels panel, right click the unassociated alpha channel, and choose load to clarity alpha. This will mask the clarity to just the foreground detail, preventing it from being applied to the sky. The effect may be too strong, so I can click on the clarity thumbnail here to bring the dialog back up and I can just reduce the strength. I may also want to apply an adjustment to the sky and have it ignore the foreground detail. I'll select the background layer, then add an HSL adjustment using Command U on Mac, Control U on Windows. And I'll bring the saturation down to remove some color intensity from the image. Now I can move back to the channels panel Right click on associated alpha and load it to the HSL shift adjustment alpha. Like with the clarity filter, this will currently be affecting the foreground. All we need to do is invert the HSL shift adjustment mask by going to layer and invert. Or we can use command I on Mac, control I on Windows. And by hiding and showing this adjustment, you can see it's now masked to the sky detail. Another approach you can take is to load and then invert a selection instead. I'll go to the channels panel, right click unassociated alpha and load it to the pixel selection. And now I need to invert it. So I can go to select, invert pixel selection, or I can use shift command I on Mac, shift control I on Windows. I can then add a brightness and contrast adjustment, which will immediately be masked to the active selection. I'll deselect, then alter these sliders until I achieve the effect I'm after. Now I'll show you a workflow for when you have the alpha channel as a separate render pass and wish to use it for masking. I've got a composite render here, which I will click drag in and offer to the top toolbar, which will open it as a separate document. Now I'll go back out and click drag in the alpha pass, then release the mouse button to place it. I'll align it by using the move tool, which is V on the keyboard. I'll turn snapping on up here, then just drag it into place. To use this image data as a mask, I can right click on it, within the Layers panel, and choose Rasterize to Mask. This converts it into a native mask layer within Affinity Photo, and you can see it's removing the background sky. Typically, you would want this mask to affect a specific layer, such as the main render layer. I can click drag, and offer this mask to the thumbnail of the layer I want to mask it to, then release the mouse button. 
Now, you may have a specific workflow where you need to work with externally linked image files. The original render pass images may be updated, including the mask, so you would want to maintain this external link. Using rasterized mask unfortunately breaks this link, but there is an alternative solution. I'll delete the mask layer, then go to File, Placement Policy, Linked. This ensures that any placed files are externally linked and not embedded in the document. I'll place the alpha render pass once again and align it. But this time, rather than using rasterize to mask, I'll go to Layer, New Live Filter Layer, Colors, Procedural Texture. On this dialog, I'll click the plus icon here, then disable the R channel and instead enable A, which means this filter is now rendering on just the alpha channel. Now in the equation field, I could simply type R. This will then enable the parent alpha pass layer to be used as a mask. For example, I could click drag and offer it to the thumbnail of the background layer, then release the mouse button, and it behaves exactly the same as if it were explicitly rasterized to a mask layer. You may, however, wish to use a render pass with RGB color information as a mask instead. Now, I've got the V-Ray refraction pass, which I'll drag in and align. Once again, I'll add a live procedural texture layer to this render pass and target the alpha channel. But this time, I'll type RGB 2I, open bracket, capital R, comma, capital G, comma, capital B, close bracket, then use the return key. This will create a weighted grayscale intensity from the red, green, and blue color information and use it for the alpha channel data. Now, if I add a brightness and contrast adjustment, I can drag the parent refraction layer and offer it to the thumbnail of the brightness and contrast adjustment. Then release the mouse button. If I move the brightness slider up, you can see it's now being masked to that weighted RGB intensity that we just created from the refraction pass color information. Better yet, if we go to Window Resource Manager, we'll see that the alpha and refraction passes remain externally linked. This means that if they are changed externally, they can be updated within Affinity Photo without having to bring in the new versions and rasterize them to mask layers, saving valuable time with visualization workflows. The process of adding the live procedural texture and typing the weighted intensity equation can be recorded as a macro, so you can quickly and easily repeat the process in the future. Do have a look at the macros video tutorial for more information on this. And that was a video looking at alpha workflows with 3D renders. I hope you found it useful and thank you for watching.